Today, we're gonna make some custom stinger transitions for your stream, kind of like this. Let's get started. <laughs> hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity. Welcome back to another tutorial here on my channel. Today, we're gonna be looking at custom stinger transitions for your stream that you can put into OBS to make your stream look a bit higher quality. I know that whenever I go into a stream and I see stinger transitions, I'm like, all right, this is a high quality stream. This guy knows what he's doing, especially if I can tell that they are custom made because it uh, revolves around their logo or something. But today we're gonna be sticking to some very simple stinger transitions inside of After Effects. And I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to do that. So let's get started. All right, guys, so you've just opened up After Effects, you hit new project and you're greeted with a screen like this. So what you're gonna do is hit new composition or go up to composition up here and click new composition. You can set your comp to be whatever you stream at. If you stream at 60 frames per second, change it there. Whatever your resolution is, change it here. This is for 1080p full HD. We're gonna leave it just like that. So you can go ahead and hit okay. And we are opened with our blank canvas, nothing going on. So let's create our stinger transition. So we're gonna go up to layer, hit new and solid. Here's where we can set our channel colors. So whatever your channel color is, let's say ours is a light bluish green like that. Looks pretty good. Hit okay. And here we go. We've got our channel color filling up the screen just like that. And now we're going to mess around with wipes. So if you go over here to effects preset, you can see I've already typed it in here. You want to go to the effects preset tabs. If you do not see this tab, go up to window and you can turn it on in here. Effects presets, make sure there's a check next to it. So you want to type wipe and you'll see you've got many things to play with. I'll let you guys play with them because once you know how to use one, you know how to use them all. So we've got radial wipe, linear wipe, iris wipe, and gradient wipe. We're going to go with a linear wipe because it is what people think it is. A basic wipe that looks like this. If you go through the transition completion here. You can see it just wipes across the screen. So up here in the effects controls is where you're gonna make all your changes. You've got the project here where all your assets and the solids are and whatnot, but effects controls is the other tab. And here's where we're making our changes. So what you wanna do is you wanna set your wipe angle. So we're gonna to go to 50%, which is halfway done with the transition. And we're gonna set our wipe angle to be a nice diagonal. So I think 151 is pretty close to go from corner to corner like that. And then we're gonna go back to the beginning set our transition to 100 and click on the stopwatch next to transition completion to start our keyframes. Then we're gonna wanna move forward a couple frames, maybe like eight or 10 or something. I'm gonna hit page down on my keyboard to go forward by one frame. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Let's go 10. And then we can move this 100% down to zero and you'll see it fill up the frame just like that. So now when we play through it, it'll go shoo, across the screen. Whoo just like that. So what we're about to do next is a bit of an advanced trick, but it's gonna give you a much better final product if you just follow it. So follow what I do step by step and you'll be just fine. So what you wanna do is you wanna hit these uh, drop down arrows and drop down into effects like this and drop down into linear wipe like this. This is where you made all your edits. You can see our two keyframes here that we just made from 100% uh, down to zero. And what you want to do is you want to draw a box to select both of those. They're going to go blue. You see that? And right click on one of them, go to keyframe assistant and easy ease. Make sure you select that. They should turn into these little hourglass shapes. If they do, you've done it right. Congratulations. Now you want to make sure they are selected and then click on this graph editor right here. It's a little button right up here to the left. Looks like a graph. It says graph editor if you hover over it. Click on that and you'll see this little bulge thingy, this line on a graph. That is your animation that you just created. So what you want to do, here's where it gets a bit advanced. You want to click on this node right here. It'll turn yellow or it should turn yellow. I think it'll turn yellow for you. It's not just me. And there's these little circular handles you can grab. Click and drag that and drag it in and make this shape with your graph to where it goes up and then evens out like that. You want to make this kind of shape. You can do it from the other direction like this if you want, but I prefer doing it from this direction. So there you go. Make that shape then cancel out of the graph editor and you're good to go. You'll see why that was important later. So it goes pretty fast now. We might wanna extend it out. So let's go out a couple more frames, like 15 frames. You can grab the keyframe, drag it out. There we go. That looks beautiful, just like that. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to duplicate our solid. So click on it, hit Command D, 
or Control-D if you're on a Mac. No, wrong way. Command-D if you're on a Mac, Control-D if you're on Windows. And we're gonna duplicate it twice, and here's where you can set different colors now. So this middle one, we're gonna click it, go up to Layer, Solid Settings, and we're gonna change our color to whatever your next channel color is. Let's maybe say it's a blue like that. Change it, hit New, then we'll click on this one, Layer, Solid Settings. Let's say your channel colors here are a bit of a pink. So there are our channel colors. You can see we changed them up here, and now we just need to offset where they start. So let's move forward a couple frames, and then let's drag this one forward, and then move forward a couple frames and drag this one forward. And now we've got this. So the reason we changed that graph back at the beginning is because now your animation does not move all linear and boring. If you didn't change that graph, these colors would stay the same thickness all the way across the screen and look a bit boring. But now, if you look at this bluish green color, you see how large the color piece is here? And as we move forward in the animation, it gets smaller and thinner. That is because we changed the graph and it makes your animation a bit more dynamic and looks a bit better than just some colored things going across the screen. It's pretty boring if you just do that. So change the graph and uh, make it not linear so that the colors kind of catch up with each other. You see that? Looks really nice. They get really thin. So let's play through this. There's what your channel uh, stinger transition is going to look like with your custom colors. Looks pretty good. So now what we're going to want to do is we want to select all of our colors here just like that. Right click and hit pre-compose. Make sure it's move all attributes to a new composition. Make sure you check that and hit OK. And that's going to combine all of this layer into one layer. So now what you want to do is you want to go through your animation, find out when it gets fully one color like this, go forward a couple frames, and then hit Command or Control Shift D. And that's going to split your clip. Control Shift D or Command Shift D if you're on a Mac. You can delete this ending piece here. So you just got this little animation and then it goes blank, and we want to duplicate that. So if you remember from the last time, duplicating is Control D or Control Command D if you're on a Mac, and then you can right click the top one, go up to Time and Reverse uh, Layer, Time Reverse Layer, and that's going to reverse your clip. So you can drag this down to the end. So now what we've got is the animation coming in, and then it switches to the reverse clip of it coming back out, just like that. So here's our animation. Look at that. And there you go, guys. There is your Stinger transition. It is quite beautiful, and you can have it with your custom channel colors. So working with the different wipes here, like an iris wipe or a radial wipe, is very similar to this one. It's just going to give you a different style of animation when it comes in. So make sure you mess around with those and see which one you like most. But pretty much what you do is you keyframe it coming in, and then you duplicate it and reverse it so that it then comes back out in the same way. So comes in, goes out, comes in and goes out. And if you wanted to get real custom, once it fills up with one screen, you can have your logo come in and then your logo come out. Maybe if I'll show you guys how to do that in a bit more, in a, a bit more of an advanced tutorial later on if you'd like to. But now I'm going to show you how to export this. So you want to go to the end of your animation and you want to hit N on the keyboard, N for end and B for beginning. N for end and B for beginning. That's how you set your in and out points. Beginning is going to be at the actual beginning. End is going to be right after your animation is finished. So you got your selection here and you're going to go up to composition and add to render queue. So once you've sent it to the render queue, you're going to see it right here with some of this blue text. You want to click where it says lossless and go up to format and change this to QuickTime. Change it to QuickTime and then where it says channels here and RGB, click on that and make sure you select RGB plus alpha. That'll give you that transparent channel so that the animation can go over your actual footage. So RGB plus alpha. Hit OK, and then where it says Comp 1 here, or if you named your comp, it'll be whatever you named it, right there, you can click on that, and you can save it as whatever you want. Here I'm in my Stream Elements um, folder, but you can name it here and save it wherever you want. So let's go Test Stinger Animation. Whoops, Animation. There we go, and we'll go ahead and save it and then just hit render and it'll render through your animation. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something from the tutorial. If you need help with anything else, if I went a little bit too fast, make sure you hit me up down in the comments of this video or on Twitter, I will direct message you there if you hit me up with any questions about After Effects. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you need help installing it into OBS, make sure you search it on YouTube. There's thousands of tutorials that show you how to install Stinger transitions, but I will see you in the next video. 
Peace out.